Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. You can now use the promo code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena Games video. Today we're taking a look at another standard deck, and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, we're taking a look at Eerie Ultimatum, the 7 mana sorcery saying return any number of permanent cards with different names from your graveyard to the battlefield. So a very powerful effect indeed, and the reason why we see so many one-offs and two-offs in this deck is because of Eerie Ultimatum wanting us to diversify the names of permanents in our graveyard. So let's take a look at the entire deck list here, starting out with our two drops where we have two copies of Mire Triton as a two mana to one death touch that mills the top two cards when it enters a the battlefield. Then we've got a wide selection of mana ramp creatures with two copies of Decarry at it, which can potentially ramp for more than one if we control a creature with power four or greater. We've got Incubation Druid that can adapt to potentially produce three mana. We've got Paradise Druid that has Hexproof as long as it's untapped, and then Skull Prophet as a 3-1 that can also potentially help us fill the graveyard by milling the top two cards. And finally two copies of Wolf Willow Haven as an enchant land that can also produce additional green mana and be sacrificed to make a wolf token. And then at 3 mana we've got some more ramp with two copies of Gift of Paradise as a 3 mana enchantment that then the enchanted land can produce 2 mana of any one color and also gains 3 life when it enters the battlefield so also not too bad to get back with an eerie ultimatum. And then we've got two copies of Beanstalk Giant which can ramp us with the Fertile Footsteps adventure searching up a basic land and putting it on the battlefield untapped and later we can cast the giant out of the adventure zone and its power and toughness is equal to the number of lands we control and we've got plenty of ways to put additional lands in play. And then if we happen to mill the Beanstalk Giant, we'll get back the creature half of the card, so it's also pretty nice to return with Eerie Ultimatum. And then we've got two copies of Ashiok Dream Render, which can also help us fill the graveyard for Eerie Ultimatum, since we can target ourselves with the minus one ability, milling the top four cards, and at the same time we'll be exiling the opponent's graveyard, and there's no lack of graveyard synergies in standard that we can stop with Ashok. And then the passive ability also prevents the opponent from searching their library, which can definitely come up when they have Fabled Passage, for instance. Then at 4 mana we've got two copies of Rankle Master of Pranks, which is also another way of helping us fill the graveyard, since we can potentially discard an expensive card from our hand with one of his abilities if he connects with the opponent, so we can discard our expensive creatures and planeswalkers, and then get them back with ultimatum, while maybe drawing us extra cards to help us find the ultimatum in the first place. And then despite wanting a lot of one-offs and two-offs for Eerie Ultimatum, we're still playing the full playset of Cavalier of Thorns, just because it's so synergistic in our deck. For 5 mana we get a 5-6 Elemental Knight with Reach, and when it enters the battlefield it mills the top 5 cards of our library, filling the graveyard, and we can also reveal a land card from among them and put it onto the battlefield untapped, so it also helps us ramp towards the Ultimatum. And then when the Cavalier dies, we can exile it, and if we do, we can put another card from our graveyard on top of our library, so it can also help us put Eerie Ultimatum from our graveyard on top of our deck, to then draw it on the following turn. And then we've got one copy of Trostani Discordant as a 5 mana 1 4 legendary creature, giving other creatures we control plus 1 plus 1, and when Trostani enters the battlefield we get to make two life-linking soldier tokens that will all get plus 1 plus 1, so a pretty nice card against aggressive decks. And then we've got one copy of Elspeth Conquers Death, which can double up as a nice removal spell on the first chapter, and then on the third chapter can return a creature or planeswalker from the graveyard to the battlefield, and of course no shortage of ways of putting stuff in the graveyard in this deck. Then we've got a single copy of Coglath, the Titan Ape, which is a nice creature that can fight something when it enters the battlefield, and can also destroy artifacts or enchantments when Kogla attacks. And then we've got some powerful planeswalkers at 6 mana that we can simply ramp into with our mana creatures or reanimate from the graveyard with Eerie Ultimatum. One copy of Liliana Dreadhorde General that can generate zombie tokens, make each player sacrifice two creatures, all while drawing a ton of cards in the meantime. We've got a Garak Cursed Huntsman which can generate wolf tokens and destroy stuff with the minus 3. We've got Ugin the Ineffable which can also generate 2-2 two -two tokens with the plus 1 ability and can destroy stuff with the minus 3, so a pretty common theme with these 6 mana planeswalkers. And then we also have a single copy of Titanothorax which we can cycle for 1 and a green, putting it in a graveyard and drawing a card, and then later maybe get it back with our ultimatum, generating an 11-11 trampling dinosaur beast, and then our 4 copies of Eerie Ultimatum. And then the mana base, we've got three basic plains, three basic swamps, three basic forests that we can all search up with our Fabled Passage. And then of course for Beanstalk Giant we also want a decent amount of basic lands to search up. And then four Overgrown Tombs and four Temple of Malady which lets us scry one. And four of the Indatha Triome which can also be cycled if we're flooding out a bit. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. 
Alright, we're on the draw, facing a Yurion Sky Nomad deck. We've got a fine hand. Skull Prophet and Triton to help us fill the graveyard. Not sure yet what I want to fetch with the passage here, so I'll just play my forest for now. Opponents maybe on a Teamer Elemental build. Yep, there we see the Risen Reef. Probably just gonna double two drop. And then next turn I could cast Ugin. Garrick in a graveyard, that's good. Not a Risen Reef, alright. So we're points drawing a lot of cards. And a Boreal Grazer to put an extra land in play. Beanstalk Giant, so I could play Ugin and kill one of the Risen Reefs. I think that's what I'm gonna do. And then we'll keep uh, Triton back to protect Ugin. But even if Ugin dies, we can just get him back with Eerie Ultimatum, so it's not too bad. Opponent could also be playing the uh, Teamer Ultimatum. Let's see if that's what they're trying to cast here. It's going to be a Cavalier instead. Now, ideally, I would mill myself a bit more with Skull Prophet before casting Eerie Ultimatum. And yet, there we see Genesis Ultimatum from the opponents. A Lava Coil exiles Triton, and Risen Reef kills Ugin. So. Eerie Ultimatum would get back Fabled Passage and two Planeswalkers, that might still be enough here. So let's see, we've got double white, double green, so... Swamp, I guess, uh, works here. Or I could get a Forests, in case we want to cast Cavaliers later. I think I minus on Risen Reef again. And then I can chum the Cavalier without killing it. So not a bad ultimatum, all things considered. Even if we didn't have a very full graveyard. Opponent gets Yurion back in hand. And I'm just gonna chump Cavalier if they attack me. So I could ultimate Garrick. Probably want to fetch before taking my draw step. To increase my chances of drawing an actual spell. Another Genesis Ultimatum going to the graveyard. Alright, so Ugin can only plus. 
Garruk, on the other hand, I could ultimate, which would be fine. Giving Beanstalk Giants Trample in the future is not bad. Or I could just minus three on Yorion and keep Chumping Cavalier. Maybe that's better. Yeah, let's do that. Ooh, another Aerial Tomatum. That could be fun. So, plus Ugin. Could also just cast a Beanstalk Giant here. Maybe that's better. I do want to keep milling myself with Skull Prophets. Yeah, let's just play Beanstalk Giant. And pass the turn. So even if they do somehow kill my Planeswalkers, I've got a backup ultimatum to get them back. The third Risen Reef. They have drawn a lot of Risen Reefs considering they're playing an 80 card deck. And Nissa who shakes the worlds. So if their last card is something like Hydroid Crisis, they could potentially play a very large one, which would be bad for me. Although I don't know if an elemental deck playing Genesis Ultimatum is going to have Hydroid Crisis in it too. Alright. So what are we doing here? Just gonna keep plussing my Planeswalkers, play another Beanstalk Giant. If I attack with Beanstalk, they could chump with Cavalier. And that could get back Yorion, which would be pretty bad for me, because then they can flicker all their elementals with the Risen Reef in play. I guess I'll cycle this first, maybe. Just gonna pass a turn, keep building up a big board, keep milling myself with uh, Skull Prophets, and eventually cast a second ultimatum. Now I don't want Nissa to ultimate, because that would mean indestructible lands, so I could just minus Ugin here. Ooh, and raise Forerunners, alright. I think we'll be able to handle this attack pretty easily with the two Beanstalk Giants. So it's not actually that bad. Alright, let's go to blocks. So the Beanstalks can go in front of Foreigners and Cavalier. If I kill my three Wolf Tokens, I can Ultimate Garrick next turn, which will let me potentially win the game on the backswing. So I don't mind them getting something back with Cavalier. So... Can even take out some lands in the process. If I block like this, take out a land. And then... Uh, just make sure the wolf dies. I guess if I want to make sure the wolf dies, I don't want to be double blocking Risen Reef with it. So let's just block like this. And then double block Risen Reef. And then I'm taking 2 for 9 damage total. It seems fine. 
mill myself with profit on the way out. And then we'll have some giants trampling beanstalk giants next turn. And I could ultimate Garrick and then get it back with Eerie Ultimatum too. So this turn's gonna be sweet. Start here. Ultimate Garrick. Eerie Ultimatum, them all back. And my opponent should be pretty dead here. Minus for good measure. And attack. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. We're on the draw, don't have the fastest hand in existence, but do get to Adventure Beanstalk on 3, hopefully Cavalier on 4. So we'll try it. Facing the Teamer, Triland. Hoping for a 2 man Accelerant, or just, I guess, any untapped land will do. And then what land do I get with Beanstalk Giants? Probably a forest. Birth searches up a basic plains. So opponents playing four colors at least. I guess five colors even. We can use Rankle to discard some of the expensive cards in our hands. Vraska sacrifices the Saga to draw a card and gain a life. Could just Rankle attack Vraska down to three. Or I can play Cavalier, which is probably better here. And then next turn I could Ugin minus. Probably get a swamp here. Got a decent amount of cards in the graveyard already. So we just need one more land to cast Ultimatum. Shatter the sky. Alright. And then what do I get back? So next turn I could just cast Ultimatum, which seems pretty decent. So I don't even need to put Fabled Passage on top. Because we just drew another Fabled Passage. So I can just get it back for free instead. And it doesn't matter too much what I search up here. Get another land. And our graveyard is pretty full for our next ultimatum. So they can't quite ultimate Vraska yet. And should they have another board wipe, I might have to play Ugin 
or maybe Rankle to prevent Vraska from ultimating. Deafening Clarion can clean up some of the small stuff. And once Trostani dies, Cavalier and Kogla die as well. Fair enough. Do we put anything back on top? Could just put Ultimatum back. But I'm probably gonna take a turn off dealing with Vraska before they can ultimate. So I think Ugin plus Skull Prophet makes sense. And then next turn we can ultimate him again. And our opponent concedes, knowing about the incoming ultimatum with a very full graveyard. Alright, sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. Play Temple, hoping to find a turn to mana creature maybe. Don't think I need to keep Swamp. And then if we don't find a two mana accelerant, we'll just play a passage so we can beanstalk on three. And do I get a plains right away? Do I get a forest for Cavalier? Probably doesn't matter too much. Gutter bones into Bootnipper. All right. Let's get a forest. So I can only do one thing this turn. Next turn I'll be able to Beanstalk plus Haven, or I can just play Cavalier. Alright, Drill Bits probably takes away Cavalier. Takes Rankle instead. And another Bootnipper. Alright, let's play Cavalier. Don't really need to get another planes because we have gifts to fix for double white too. And then we're just looking for ultimatum. I'll block a gutter bones for now. If I had ultimatum in the graveyard, and trading away for Bootnipper would be a lot more appealing. Grim Dancer, so... They seem to have some Death Touch synergy, perhaps. Guess I'll get a Plains now. Still no ultimatum, but I could get back another Cavalier with the first one. Call of the Death Dweller getting back boot nippers and gutter bones. So menace lifelink, death touch, and menace death touch.
So if I get an untapped land here, I'll be able to sack Haven too. Still no ultimatums in graveyards. So how do we block here? If I double block, I'm losing both creatures. So the only like reasonable block is Wolf on Gutter Bones. But yeah, Death Touch means it doesn't matter how big my creatures are. They're still gonna end up dying. So what would I get back if Cavalier dies? Rankle, maybe? Still not that great. I guess for now I'll just block like this. Another Call of the Death Dweller, getting back Bootnipper and Gutter Bones. All right, let's hope this one finds us a uh, ultimatum. All right, there's Eerie Ultimatum. Let's get Temple. And Cavalier of Thorns on top seems fine, I guess. So now I'm happy to trade away Cavaliers to get back Ultimatum. If we get the chance. So if I double block Grim Dancer, that's the only way I survive, because if I block Gutter Bones, I'm taking seven. So I'll lose both Cavaliers. Only need to exile one of them to put Ultimatum on top. Alright, so this one we decline, and this one we take action. No! Call of the Death Dweller back Grim Dancer, alright. Opponent does have a lot of mana creatures, but hopefully we have enough blockers here to survive. Make sure to click on every single card here and not miss anything. Uh, let's double check. Alright, this looks good. And then Haven can go there. We get to fight with Kogla. Do I have any humans in play that I can make Kogla indestructible? I do have Skull Prophet, so if I go full control, I can uh, find Grim Dancer. And then in response, I can activate Kogla, returning Skull Prophet to hands. Gotta be careful that we don't deck ourselves here. Play Profits. And at this point, I'll start milling the opponents. Do I want to attack with Rankle? Sure, why not? Make each player sacrifice a creature and discard a card. And we'll sacrifice carry at it, I guess. I guess the sequencing could have been a little bit better. I could have attacked first, make him discard, and then activate Ashok to exile some additional creatures. Opponent attacks. We'll block. 
So this has Menace. And this has Death Touch. Don't think I need to worry about Trample shenanigans. And there's Regisaur. The last card standing. Alright, so... Can attack after playing Incubation Druids. And our opponent scoops it up. Oof, that was actually a pretty close game. We went down to one life and an ultimatum just in time to save the day. Yeah, that was a good game. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. No ultimatum, but can just ramp into a Kogla and cast a Beanstalk Giant, which should be fine. Don't really want to fetch a Plains right away since it doesn't let me Skull Prophet on two, but maybe I would play Paradise Root first anyway. Sure. Don't think it matters too much here. We'll just play Forest. Drowned Secrets, alright. If our opponent's trying to mill me, then we just want to find Ultimatum and that should be quite good. Yeah, let's play Paradise Root first. And then next turn I could adventure the Beanstalk Giants and play Prophet in the same turn. Although I guess that means I can search up a Plains with the Adventure. So we'll just get a Swamp here, I guess. And then Fable Passage can search a Plains. Discovery, so opponent's a self-mill deck. Maybe playing... Cards like uh, Creeping Chill, Arclight Phoenix, and Narcomoeba, and there we see Narcomoeba and Arclight Phoenix. So getting Kogla in play to destroy the Drowned Secrets is pretty important. And then Skull Prophet could attack. Since I don't have ultimatum in hand, I don't see a great reason to mill myself instead of getting in for three. A radical idea discarding Arclight Phoenix, but with only one land drop available, I don't see them casting two more spells. Alright, let's uh, play Trostani then. Destroy the Drowned Secrets and get in for almost lethal. So don't really see them staying alive, even if they get back two copies of Arclight Phoenix from the graveyard. Unsummons a Kogla. So they need one more spell, another unsummon on Trostani. Gets back double Phoenix. But that's still not gonna be quite enough here. Alright, GG's. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing a Lurus deck. This hand's a little sketchy with the two Ashioks and no actual early ramp, but I'll try it. If they are playing a cycling deck, then Ashok is pretty good at preventing Zenith Flare from killing me. I'll keep a Gift of Paradise. A two mana ramp card would have been way better, but I'll still take it. Alright, so this is the enchantment aggro deck instead. It's probably going to be a tough matchup. Hushbringer, does stop Cavalier of Thorns, so that's also annoying. So 
Stone Cold for one. Right, let's run out Rankle. And all three modes are useful on Rankle here. Opponent's gonna chump. And use Alsates to get protection from black. So next turn we could maybe see an aura on the stone coil to hold off Rankle. Another Alsate instead. Ashok is still useful at shutting down Lurus in general, but not as important here as it would be in the cycling matchup, I think. Ah, let's get in there with Rankle, see what happens. Could also see a pump spell here. No, nope, just a chump. Let's play Paradise Root then. And now with Hushbringer gone, I can maybe play Cavalier and get a land. Solid footing on Stone Coil turns it into a 2 2. So our opponent probably playing the various Vigilant enchantments. Sentinel's Eye is one of them. And then there's Sentinel's Mark as well. So it can hold off Rankle now. So we'll just play Cavalier. And we're inching closer to this Eerie Ultimatum. So currently, not the best graveyards, but Asho could help. Alurus goes to hands. Start milling myself with Ashok. Nightmares. While exiling the opponent's graveyard. You Could play a second Ashok. I think that's maybe unnecessary. We'll just try and leverage the first one. And maybe it'll end up using the Alsate to kill Ashok here. Alright, a 10 10 Stone Coil Serpent goes after Ashok. So I could triple block and then they would use Alsade to give protection from black or green. I think I'll let Ashok go. And then we'll just play another Ashok. Keep milling myself. Elspeth conquers death. Not too useful in this matchup. Right, let's pass. Stone Cold just going face now. So they can sack Alsade and then replay Alsade, but then they will be shields down and I can Elspeth Conqueror's Death to Lurus. It's gonna be a Karmatros Blessing instead. So they keep the Alsade alive. No death triggers from the Cavalier because of Hushbringer. Alright, it's go time. Better hit something good. Yeah, not the best. Not a cavalier that doesn't do anything. I 
at least I'll gain a bit of life from this gift. Double check that we didn't miss anything. And then enchant Swamp. I'll say it's gonna save Lurus, but now we can exile the Alsades with uh, Ashok at least. Keep milling myself. I leave you with one last and pass a turn. All right, so the game continues. Can throw a bunch of stuff in front of Stone Coil since we have two more ultimatums in hand. So 12, 12 Serpents. My Triton does have Death Touch, so they don't have a great attack. And our opponent concedes, awesome. So Ultimatum does it again. Yeah, overall the deck's been playing out quite a bit better than I had hoped for. So very happy with how it performed today. And a lot of fun too, so that's the most important thing. I want to thank everyone for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.